seems legit. And welcome back to my channel. I'm Tori. I love sewing and I love to teach people to sew. So today we will be doing the Brimer bag by Bumbleroot Design. Uh, if you are subscribed to my channel, you will notice that this is from a previous video on how to quilt fabric and this is what we turned it into. Uh, so this is really, really cute. This is a zipper tab free bag. Um, and we do this top zip as like a single complete piece. So it's really, really fun and something different. It's also got a zipper pocket in the front and I've gone with rainbow poppies. And because my fabric is directional, I will be teaching you how to alter that because the pattern does actually call for non-directional fabric, but I'm a rebel and never do what I'm told. Patterns are a guide to me. Uh, but we do actually follow along the pattern because I'd never made it before and it did have some funky stuff going on here. Uh, but all in all, I think it'll come out really, really cute. It's a decent size too. Like it's nearly the size of my head. Uh, so if you would like to see how to make this, please stay tuned. Right, let's get started. Now, on the, the front pattern piece, it does actually have a space to tell you if you want to do embroidery. And I did very seriously consider doing it. I was going to do a little embroidered thing here. But then I decided it wasn't going to work with my vinyl and the fact that I'd already quilted it. So I've skipped that. I did also, off camera, quilt the top so that the quilt lines actually match up. I don't know if you can see that, but all the everything matches up. So I just found the center of this and made sure I placed it the same place I did the center of the other one. Um, everything else has been interfaced. I've got all the pattern pieces here. I don't actually need those. Um, so we've gone with Remo Puppies, because why not? Uh, so you need your two inside bits and your pocket. Now I'm probably going to do something weird with this because it is directional and I won't want half my puppies upside down. What I didn't do is quilt the sides. And the main reason for that is is because it's not terribly wide and I've just made peace with that. I could have probably done like a single line, like a like two sets down the center. But I think the, the sides being plain won't matter. But you could do it. This is just going to give it a little something different. The other things you need are half of a zip that is that long. Uh, and a small zip. This one's actually still a little bit big. It was just in my scrap of zips. So when all my zips get little, I just stick them all together. And then the first place I go to for the smaller zips that I need for bags. And obviously I've gone with rainbow. And you'll need two zipper pulls. Now this bag is constructed slightly differently to other bags so i've actually got the instructions here so i'm just going to roll this up put that in there along with my zipper head so i don't lose them i also i don't need the clips on because there's not a lot of pattern pieces to this so there's like four outside pieces and three inside pieces it's quite simple so we need to start with hold on Right, no. What's going on? I thought I had it lined up to start. Here we go. So we're starting with this and our zip. So what we need to do is do some marking. So I'm going to grab my long seam guides for this because it just seems to make sense. That one. Right, so we need this. And we need to mark, prepare the zipper. Um, so we were supposed to put this on. It does say prepare the zipper by stitching over both ends. I'm not going to do that. But because we have to stitch the ends, it means that they want the zipper to, uh, pull on already. So let's do that first. If I can line up both my ends. Apparently it's being stubborn today. There we go. Right, so we're on. Done. Then, on the right side of the fabric, mark down half an inch. So I'm using my 12 inch seam guide. Just put that up against there and draw your line. You can also just use a ruler. I find these quicker. And they're fun and they're green. Anyway, right, so mark there. With the zipper right sides down and the zipper pull to the right. So if we put this here, zipper pull to the right, 
right sides down. Um, do, 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 align the top edge of the zipper with the line we just drew. So it needs to sit there like so. And obviously we need to make sure that the zipper goes from end to end. So there, I can use some wonder clips to hold that in place. Like so. Um, okay. Also align the center mark, so we've put that in and baste it in place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, so I'm gonna go back to a two and a half stitch length and I'm gonna baste it in place like it says. So you just need to make sure that the zip's lined up against your line that you drew and baste it on. Now obviously we don't have to go all the way to the end because it cuts out. So baste it down, check. Um, right, on the wrong side of your front pocket lining, which is your rectangle piece, this one, Draw a line. Where's my other seam guide? Is that what I need right now? No. Alright, we need a ruler this time. Because my seam to hide hasn't got the big one. So now it wants me to draw a line three quarters of an inch down. I'm going to use a friction pen for this. Mark there. Draw a line um, and mark the center. So again, we all know I like to just clip the center. It's not going to damage anything doing it that way. So we should now have a line with a clip in the middle. Uh, place front pocket lining right sides down on top of the basted zip like this. Um, centering and align the top edge. Alright, so join these up here. And again, we're going to take some clips. And your, your center point should line up if all's gone to plan. And because this is the same width there. Um, so place it down, right sides down. Aligning it along here. Don't align it with a zipper, pin or clip in place. So we've done that. Next step. Stitch along the line you drew. Easy enough. Stitch, and we're going to back stitch to lock it in. Now, remembering that we've got a zip on here, I'm just going to zip it past where I am. And we're going to stitch along our line. And we're going to backstitch when we get to the end to lock it in place. And then you can take those clips off. We actually don't need any of them at the moment. Trim up all of those tails. So now we're left with this. And so far my puppies will be the right way. That is important. Okay, unfold the pocket and the lining away from you so that it is right sides up. Flip the whole assembly over at a strip of double sided tape above the line, but don't take off the protective layer. Okay. So we need some double sided tape. I'm going to use half inch tape because I just am. So where are we putting the double sided tape? Above the visible stitch line on the main panel. So this way. So we want to put it above. So that would be here. Uh, but we're not going to take the backing off. We're just going to put it on there. Like so. Okay. Uh, fold only the top of the main panel back. So that the seam is leaving. Also bring. So we're just going to stick that down by the look of it. 
take that off just that one stitch it down stick it down easy peasy lemon squeezy right now as you can tell mine's not staying so you might have to um, really crease along there and it wants us to do the same to this side So again, you can use fabric glue for this. We're just going to stick these down out of the way. The lining side is always going to be more cooperative than the other side. As you can see, it's popped up again. Um, a way to combat this, if you're having this problem, is put a heavy book or if you've got a heavy iron on it and walk away for a little while. I'm obviously not going to do that because we're on a video. But I am going to Tory squish it in the hope that that's going to help it stay where it's told. But, who knows, it still might not. Right, stuck and stuck. Now we're going to fold the whole lining up the top. Now this is where my poppies are going to be upside down. So that's what I don't want. So what I'm going to do to combat my problem of upside down poppies is I'm going to clip it to the zip. Because that's obviously where it's headed. Right, and then I'm going to lay it down flat like this, as flat as I can get it, and I'm going to take some scissors and I'm going to cut right here so that I can flip this panel and then my puppy dogs won't be upside down, because I really don't want that. So if you're using a non-directional fabric, you can skip this step. This step is technically not in the pattern, but if I snip it like that, and then flip this up the other way and then I'm just going to sew these together with a quarter inch seam allowance and then it'll go back to being a single piece of fabric except that my poppies are not upside down because I don't want upside down poppies oh I should also point out I've only got black in my bobbin and not rainbow because it's a waste of rainbow the fact that I currently can't get it anymore kind of sucks um, so yeah, I'm just using black in the bobbin. So now we're going to bring this back up and clip it again. And so now when I open this, not that I'm going to do it right now, but when I open this, now my puppies will be up the right way. But again, if you're using non-directional, that doesn't matter for you. Okay. Mine does not look like the picture. What is going on? That's supposed to be... Oh, okay, I see. So that's now supposed to be like that. So we have to fold it over once more. By the look of it. Here. And then fold that down at that seam once more and that's going to hide our zipper and give us the little roll thing that we're supposed to have because I didn't have that so I'm just going to crease that and then I'm going to put some double sided tape here because again I love double sided tape so double sided tape Peel off the backing and then this will be our crease line to fold it over once more. Now because it's on this kind of an edge I can actually rub that on the table to get that crease to happen or I could Tory squish it. You can do it either or. All right, so that's what it's going to look like from this side. That. So now it should look like, is that right? I think that's right. Except I've brought the other side up already. So that's right. Da, 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 da. Okay, so flip the assembly over, so this is right side up. And then we're going to top stitch. 
but not all the way. So we need to mark three quarters of an inch there and here. And then we're going to top stitch along that line. So we want to start here. Do I want to make sure this is under? Uh, fold the pocket lining up towards the zipper. So up like that. And then I think I'm going to You know what? I need to undo this. Apparently. Doesn't need to actually be on there yet. There we go. That makes more sense. Okay. So once me to top stitch this line, I'm gonna do it from this side. I'm gonna crank it up to a four. <gasps> That's not gonna work for me. Stop. Right, I can't do it that way. And you wanna know why? Because the rainbow's in the top and not the bottom. Uh, so if you've got the same colour, you could do it that way. I can't do it that way because I don't want to see the black. I want to see the rainbow. So I'm going to take all that off. Flip it over this way. Just make sure my zip's out of the way. And then top stitch from here. Back stitch. Stitch along. And back stitch. Trim off the tails on both ends. And now I've got our top stitch, which is the same stitch length as these ones. Cool. Next page, that's a bunch of photos. So we are now going to take our top edge, which is this one. And I'm going to fold this up onto here, like I had it. Now, if all's gone to plan, these are going to like perfectly line up. So, line that up. I'm also going to line the zip up here and just add an extra clip. You can never have too many clips. There is no such thing. So we're just going to bring all the clips up like so. And then I'm just also going to make sure that the lines are lining up. Now I didn't get this part perfect. Can't win them all. I also didn't try in my defense. And so now I'm just going to stitch all the way along here. And I'm doing it this way up because it's easier to get to with that zipper. Trim off your tails. Ta-da! I like it. So that's that done. Where are we up to now? It also wants me to pull this up and top stitch along here. So let's do that. I'm going to go back up to my four for my stitch length. Put the tails behind and it wants me to stitch top stitch along here. So let's do that. Back stitch to lock it in. Bring this up and under. We all know me. I love a good top stitch. And back stitch. Beautiful. So now we've got this. And then it wants me to line this up and just top stitch the last little bit here so that that will go over like so. So that last little bit that we didn't top stitch before, we're now going to do there. And that makes sense because that means we won't get it doubly. Go up to those, back stitch, trim off that mountain of tails. 
I don't know why there's so many actually. And then we're going to do the same to this side. So we're going to line it up like that. I'm going to roll this so that it fits under my machine. So we're going to stitch, we're going to back stitch, and then we're going to stitch up to our old stitching. And then I really want to seal this off because I just feel like it needs to be. So I'm going to do that now. Up and out. Other side. Trim. Trim. Right. Ta-da! Now I've done my pocket. What are we up to next? Oh, we were supposed to do that then anyway. Alright, we're going to now attach the side panels, which are of these ones here. So, on the wrong side of the panels, oh, I haven't got my extra stabiliser bit here, but that's okay. So it wants us to measure I've got the wrong one. Of course I did. I can see it, it's just hiding. There we go. Right. So it wants us to draw a seam allowance all the way around. So grab my little one with a little piece. Although the bigger one will do the sides better. Whoops. So it asks us to draw this all the way around. And for the most part, I'm actually just trying to follow the instructions for a change. Shocking, I know, but. There is always method to the madness. I'm just going to trust the process and see where it leads me. Right. I have now got my seam allowance all the way around, as requested. Um, you're supposed to put a piece of stabilizer here, but I don't have any of that. Um, and I don't think it's really going to matter for this because it's all vinyl anyway. It's already quite firm. Uh, you can also add strap connectors here. So if you're going to do that, do that now. Okay. So once it's the top stitch across one of these at... This, where did I put my chalk pen? I dropped it, I'm sure. I always drop it. We should always just assume I've dropped it. I have. That's all right. I'm going to use this. I'll be able to see it, just you won't. But it says on one of the panels, top stitch along here. So, let's do that. It went purple and red. You can barely even see it anyway. But that's alright. So. Uh, with the assembled panel right side up. Grab this one. Align. The left and top edges. A pin or clip in place. This is on the side without the pocket. Okay. So. We take this side. And according to the picture, we're going to put this here. So the one that we drew on goes on the left. So we're going to line that up along the top and the side and then clip it in place. Do, 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 do. Like so. And then we're going to take our other one and line up in this corner. And clip that in place as well. Uh, 
like that. So now I put them both clipped in place. So, sew the top panels to the sides, and from the top edge down to this intersection down the bottom. So I'm going to go back to joining stitch. We're going to stitch here. So we're going to stitch along the line that we drew. See, there's always a method to the madness. It's going to get a little bit thick here. Uh, so just keep that in mind if your machine can't handle thicker vinyl layers. And then we're going to stop at that intersection. So we're not going to go all the way to the bottom. Oh, and I just ran out of bobbin. Did you see that? That was perfect timing. That never happens to me. Luckily for me, I have made a whole bunch of black bobbins. So here's the next one. And I don't completely fill my bobbins. For anyone that doesn't know that. I don't like to completely fill them. Um, they tend to misbehave. And it could be user error. So it could be me. could be the machine. could be some settings I've got. Who knows? I just don't fill them and it solves my problems. All right. So now I'm going to start. So see, we stopped here. So you should have a little bit of extra. So now I'm going to start at that intersection line there. And we're going to stitch and back stitch and then just go upwards. Uh, because that way the bulk of this is out of the way. And then go all the way to the top and backstitch. And then trim off that tail. Flip it over. I'm sure I've got tails everywhere at this point. It's always handy to have a bin close by that you can throw all these in. Because if I get rid of the tails now, they won't annoy me later when I'm trying to concentrate on other stuff. And you don't want them poking out of the bag. So now I've got those two on. Press or glue the seam allowance to the side panels. So over that way. Uh, but we're not gonna we're not gonna stitch them. We're just gonna have them like that. So you just want to kind of crease them over. So that's fine. So now we're going to take the bottom of this and bring it up to this edge here. And we're going to join that to there. So again, we're taking the main bottom panel and bringing it over and then lining it up like we just did. Now we're going to want our clips to face this piece so that we can see those marks that we did. Because that's where we'll be stitching. So lots of clips. And then we're going to do the same to this side. I imagine. I feel like that's a thing. Didn't actually read that. So far we're only at the first one still. I have to scroll down. But one would assume that that's what we're doing. Alright, so now it's going to look like this. Whoops. And then we're going to stitch the same that we just did. So we're going to stop. Also, in this case, we're going to start at that intersection. Put your needle in, stitch forward and backwards to lock them in, and then head towards the top like so and back stitch. This would be really cute for embroidery, this little pouch. And then we're going to start at the top. We're going to stitch and back stitch. We're going to follow that line down and then we're going to stop at that intersection making sure that we do back stitch. So now it looks like this. Uh, repeat with the other side. So I just did that. Then we're going to line up the bottom and we're going to stitch that. So I'm going to put multiple clips you just got to squish it down. I'm going to do the same to this side. One and you really just want to make sure that those edges are nice and lined up. So I've put three clips. You obviously don't need to be that excessive, but I just am. 
and then we're going to stitch that from oh cool and then we're onto the outside so fold this back you can see the lines so you can just stitch back stitch go across there back stitch pull it out trim the tails twist other side same again you've drawn the line on there so you're just following the line except in this case when it moved there we go and back stitch trim off those tails again and voila the outside is done let's move on to the inside right a beautiful i'll just put this over there so that i can see what else is going on here so it wants us to on the wrong side of these mark one inch and one inch just on that side i guess that's where we'll be turning the bag through that's my guess could be wrong okay place both the lining right side together and stitch so line it up all right i'm just checking the seam allowance so it is a half inch seam allowance so we're going to stitch back stitch and up like that then one would assume we're going to do the bottom one as well because that would make sense to me right so then we're going to do there back stitch trim it off and i come back and take off all the tails because they're already starting to just irritate me Snips aren't actually snipping. And then it wants us to do this seam allowance all the way down the side. And then the bottom as well. So I'm just going to chain stitch that in. And when I get to the back, it's back stitch. Trim that. And that. So you've got a gap on the side. But the rest are done. Press open seam allowances, that's okay. Then we're going to box out our corners. So we're just going to open out the seams flat. You can iron those if you want to. I'm not super worried. So like that. And then we're going to sew across. Oh, my foot came off. Did anybody else see when that happened? Clearly missed that memo. Right, so I'm going to open that back up. And then tighten it up. I tend to use bobbins. I know some of you are very against that. I've never had an issue with it though, so I'm going to do it. There we go. Open that out. Like so. Trim tail off let's do the other side so you pull these out open that flat and then line up the two seams and it should make a beautiful straight line for you like that and stitch trim the tails off again so again they're not in my way and then turn this right sides out. So now we've got the innards and outers. We've just got our last zipper to do. So we're going to take the one half of the zipper and I'm going to hold one end, run my fingers all the way along, bring it together, making sure there's no loops, and then we're going to put the zipper pull on. You're going to push it in, wiggle it, there we go, so it does that like that, which is very cute. Probably don't need it that 
There we go. Right, so we've done that. Close it entirely as far as it will go and mark on the wrong side the center of the loop. Okay. Again, lost my marky thing. I really don't know where it went, guys. I'm sure you guys saw where I put it. I have no idea. We're just going to mark it in this, and I'm just going to mark it a lot so that we can see. I don't like um, cutting my zipper tape. I'm actually highly against it, personally. It's not my thing. So I'm just going to scribble on it instead. Except that's not working, and I need my white one. The marker was in the drawer. Anyway, I'm sure you guys all knew that. So, I have marked the centre of the zip on the wrong side, as it requested. Um, close the zip, mark it at the centre, unzip the zipper a little bit. Check. With the assembled exterior, like this, make a small mark at the top centre of the side that does not have the top stitching. So that would be this one. So where there's no top stitching, find the centre and put a mark. So I'm going to use a hair clip. These little alligator clips are designed for hair. Um, I use them for sewing and that's okay. So we're going to put a clip in the centre there. Align the centre mark of the zipper right sides together with the exterior teeth pointed down. Okay, so just put the zip in. So we're going to put it in upside down. So that mark that we just drew, put the right side of the zipper tape in line with that center point, like that. And I've changed my mind already, and now I want to use these clips. These clips are stronger. I just like these because they're longer. Um, I am considering getting in the longer alligator, uh, the the longer wonder clips because they do have their place of handiness. So now I'm just going to go along the edge and clip the zip down. And I've got all of my clips facing towards the inside. And you'll notice that the zipper is way longer than it's meant to be and that's the way the pattern is because we tuck it in later. So don't worry about that. And we stitch it down with the final top stitching. It's all making sense. So I can even probably put that a little bit further down. If I'm worried, which I kind of am, because I know what I'm like, I'm actually gonna stitch over the end of that zip several times. Now I can't lose my zipper. Can't come off now, it's forever stuck. And I like that idea. So now I can push that down, clip it, around like this. And I imagine I won't be stitching that end. I should probably read that. Okay, cool. Leave the excess zipper dangling in there, is what it says to do, which is exactly what I've done. So now we're going to take our lining. Now if you have a front and a back, think about how you want to put that in. I don't though, so it's fine. And then the centre of this is going to line up with the centre of the sides, logically. Makes sense, doesn't it? And then we're just going to go around. and add it into all of the clips that are already there. Now you could have done this all three layers at once, but let me tell you, it's tricky. So I like the way they've written this, because I always like to do two and then add the third. Trying to do three things at once is tricky. You could also baste the zipper if that would suit your needs as well. Okay. So that's all lined up in there now. 
So I'm going to start here and go around and not stitch this end. Pretty sure that's what we're going to do. Because if I stitch over that end, I won't be able to get the zipper up. So, let's do this. So I'm going to start over at the end that I haven't clipped. But on the main panel, at my first zipper, uh, my first clip would make perfect sense. So I'm going to stitch, I'm going to back stitch. I'm going to take Scully. I'm going to stitch around. And I'm just bringing the bag around the whole time. It is a 3D object, uh, but you can squish it if necessary. It's not a huge deal. And then we're going to get close to this end. As close as you feel comfortable. And then stop. Then we're going to turn it through our hole that we left on the inside. Pull it out through, like so. Yeah, I'm going to stick my hands in and push it all so it sits nicely now, because it'll be easy to do. If you have a pointy stick or something that you use to help turn out your corners, now's the time to use it. Then I'm going to push all of that in. I'm also going to trim off that tail, because again, tails annoy me. And then I'm going to push this so it's down and use the clips, in fact I might use alligator clips because they're longer, to hold it in place, down. Because we're going to top stitch around here. And the reason I'm using these clips, and I'll show you the difference, let's put one of each on and I'll show you why. With the alligator clips, See how the zip doesn't squish down like it does with a wonder clip? Because I want to do top stitching, this is going to be better than squishing the zip. So that is why I'm going to go around and place these. So they're going to hold down the exterior and the lining. They're just not going to squish my zip in the process, which is lovely. That one's down a little bit too far, but you do get the idea. So I'm just going to move around. Uh, these didn't cost very much. I got them off eBay. I just bought alligator clips and I didn't buy the pretty ones. I just got basic ones. Okay, so now I'm going to zip this up just past the edge. Because the idea is, is now I have to tuck that in. And then, so I'm going to tuck that into that side. I'm going to tuck this in so that they're all lined up. And then we're going to tuck the zipper tail in between the whole lot. So whichever way works easier, I'm going to take the zipper tail and push it in like so. Making sure that enough is down. So that's why I've done it up just a little bit, so that I can make sure that it's all in there. And then you just also want to make sure that the inside is tucked under, like that. Get all the edges in. And then I'm going to grab some clips. Again, with the longer alligator clips, like that. Uh, turn the bag, done that, tucked it in, and then we're going to top stitch the whole way around. So, that's easy enough. Um, where would we like to start? I think I'm actually going to start here, so just after the zipper, because that's going to be the easiest way. Except, no, right, so because I want to stitch the outer part. I'm actually going to turn the bag inside out. And you can call me crazy, but this is the easiest way to do it. If you have a cylinder arm machine, you go do the top stitching on your cylinder arm. When you don't, we're going to turn it inside out. Right? 
so that now I'll be able to see the top stitching. The other thing we're going to want to do is have a rainbow bobbin or even just a bright colour that isn't black. So I'm going to put in... Ooh, I'm going to put in red. Red's still going to look... Oh, do I want to do a rainbow? No, I'm going to actually do a rainbow. So I'm just going to wind a small bobbin. Actually, no, I'm going to need a big bobbin for the matching thing that goes with this. So I'm just going to wind a large bobbin of rainbow thread so that we can top stitch it and it's pretty. I now have rainbow top and bottom. So I'm going to come start over near the zip. I'm going to fold it down and I'm going to go up to my four stitch length and we're going to stitch and back stitch. And then I'm going to slowly work my way around. You want to take your time with a good top stitch because people notice it. You always want to stop with your needle down when you go to readjust the bag. Oh, and I'm putting all of those in the wrong container. Good job. Now it's annoying me. Right. The downside of having multiple types of clips. Not even OCD is the reason I'm fixing it. It's because I know I'm going to have to do it later anyway. Needle down. So we're nearly to the zip now. Um, so again, you just want to make sure everything's tucked in on the inside and the outside. And then I'm just going to stitch over that. And so that has shut that hole. It has made beautiful top stitching. And while the bag's turned out like this, we also need to close the hole in the lining. So now that I've got rainbow on top and bottom, I'm going to take my clips and clip the hole shut. And you can use as many clips as you want for this. Um, I'm also going to put in a little tag, actually. I've just decided. So I have multiple types of tags. I have got the leather cool ones like that, that I put on the outside of stuff. I have fabric-y ones that ha go on the inside. And then I also embroider my logo, depending on what I'm doing. So this is going to be cute to have a little tag right in there. Like that, and I'm going to use one alligator clip to hold it because, again, it's long and I can kind of go in on the angle to hold it in place like that. And so now I just need to stitch that shut. If you are a lover of hand stitching, which I am not, you can hand stitch this close with like an invisible seam so that you wouldn't even see it. It's not my thing, so I'm just going to stitch really close to the edge. So I'm going to stitch, back stitch. So you want to get nice and close to that edge as close as you feel comfortable without running off it. And then we're going to back stitch at that edge. Like so. Trim off the tail. Untangle the other tail. Trim that off as well. And then I am just going to take a lighter, singe the edges of those so that they don't pop up later. Oh, and I missed. Ha! Of course I did. So now that I missed a spot, I missed one side of where the tag was. So clearly I should have used two clips instead of one. So I'm just going to come back to here and stitch over just the tag section. And then back stitch. Now it's shut, now we're good. And turn this out the right way. And then I can zip it up. How cute is that? It's all quilted and fabulous. Um, so this would be a really cute pouch to do embroidery and stuff on. If you have an embroidery machine, you could do something here. Or you could do it all over the back and turn the back into the front. Um, but that's all nice and sealed. That's really cute, actually. 
So there you go. That is how I make this with the instructions. Um, it would obviously be a lot quicker the second time round because you get used to it. So the more pouches you did, the quicker they'd be. But I do like this cute little like tucked in edge. That was really fun. That was something different to do. Um, and I don't regret not doing these sides with the quilting because it doesn't really matter if I'm totally honest. It still looks very, very cute. And the inside's fabulous. So there you go, guys. Uh, thank you for joining me. And stay tuned. There will be another video this week because my child's back at school. So I've got more time. All right, guys. Till next time. Bye-bye.